Good morning, algebra students. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, same thing as usual, today's Flipgrid is at that link. Please go answer the question, it's such good fun. Uh, if you are watching this video, you have already found the YouTube lesson for today. Now please, try these problems in your notes. Pause the video and try A and B in your notes. And then unpause it to do it with me. Okay, so... Let's get our different colors here. Uh, this is a review back from 7.3. We are going to see. Remember, this is... Uh, well, we'll do A right up here in red. This is the, the sum and difference pattern. Because look at this. I have X and I have 4. I have X and I have 4. The only difference is that I have 1 plus and 1 minus. So... When I'm working on question A up here, remember that when I have x plus 4 and x minus 4, I'm just going to take the first thing and square it. And I'm going to take the second thing and square it. And I'm just going to subtract the two. So all of this, whoa, whoa, <laughs> all of this is just equal to x squared minus 4, or x squared, or excuse me, x squared minus 4 squared, which is x squared minus 16. Wonderful. Get a different color, and we'll do b. This is the square of a binomial pattern. So what we have here is, remember that this is like, x minus 2 times x minus 2. And we could FOIL this and figure it out, but ah, there's an easier way. Remember that this is the first thing squared. Um, and then we take 2 times the first thing times the last thing. And then we square the last thing. And we put all of these together. So this gives us x squared. This gives us negative 4x. And this gives us 4. And then we put all of these together into x squared minus 4x. Ah, minus 4x plus 4. So it, it follows that pattern of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Wonderful, wonderful. So that is how to foil these or how to multiply these special patterns of polynomials. Let's take a look at what we are doing today. Today's Learning Target and Success Criteria says, I remember the polynomial patterns from 7.3. Hey, hopefully the entry task helped refresh that. And the success criteria is I can use the polynomial patterns from 7.3 to factor polynomials. Ah, so there's the difference. 7.3 was multiplying polynomials, just like we did in the entry task. What we are doing today is we are going to divide those polynomials. Awesome. So, first thing we need to do is remind ourselves of those special patterns. The first one was called the difference of two squares. So, um, please pause this video, put the red box in your notes, because I think it is incredibly helpful. So, this says, this kind of goes the opposite way in... Uh, in the entry task, I gave you this part, and then you found this part. Today, we're going in the opposite direction. Instead of pointing our arrow this way, we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to go this way. I'm going to give you the polynomial not in factored form, and you're going to turn it into. You're going to go the other way and turn it into factored form. So you're going to use the reverse of the pattern. Just like this, when we see x squared minus 9, oh, that's x squared minus 3 squared, so we can split it up like this. 
that's exactly what our first example is going to look like. It's going to look like taking this guy and turning it in to this guy. Alrighty. So let's jump right into it. Let's do our first example. We want to factor, let's do a first. We want to factor x squared minus 25. Here's what I recommend you do. We want to get uh, a squared minus b squared, right? We, we have it in that form. Once I figure out what a and b are, well then I just have a minus b, a plus b. So all we have to do is put this into this form. So, uh, right off the bat, first thing I notice is that we have x squared, perfect, that's already in that form, and then 25. What squared gives me 25? Oh, 5. So this is x squared minus 5 squared. Perfect, and now look at that. I have a and I have b. It's x and it's 5. So I'm just going to put it in this form. I have x minus 5, x plus 5. The end. Oh. The end. That's all. If, can, if that was a little tricky for you, let's do the next one. We'll do b. 4z squared minus 1. So remember, I'm going to start by putting this in the form of a squared minus b squared. So let's see, 4z squared, it might look like, oh, I have a z squared there, I'm done. But wait, because that 4 is in front of the z, I need to think, what squared gives me 4? 2. 2 squared gives me 4. So this isn't just z squared, this is 2z squared. Because remember, this, this square goes to the 2 and it goes to the z. Okay, so this is 2z squared minus 1. What squared gives me 1? Oh! 1 squared is just equal to 1, so this must be 2z squared minus 1 squared. Awesome, and then remember, I'm just going to put it in the form a minus b, a plus b. So we'll have 2z minus 1. 2z plus 1. And there you go. The end. So, step 1, and let's see, let's do this in a different color. Uh, this is step 1. Step 1, put in the form of a squared minus b squared. And then step, there really is only a step two. Step two, put in form a minus b, a plus b. And then done. That's your answer. Woohoo! Awesome. Let's check and make sure that we were right, though. Gotta check and make sure that we were right. Ah, beautiful. x plus 5, x minus 5, and 2z plus 1 minus. Okay, check marks. We were right. Okay. Next, there were two patterns that we saw in the beginning. The first one was the sum and difference pattern. The next one is the perfect square trinomial uh trinomial remember trinomial because one two three same here one two three that's why we call it a trinomial uh please make sure that this red box is in your notes remember what we did last time let's do this in a different color so you can see is we had this part and then you gave me this part. That's what we did in the entry task. We had something that looked like this, and we spat out the thing that looked like this. Today, 
we reverse that arrow. I'm going to give you this, and you need to give me this form. So today we're, we're going in this direction. We're going from the trinomial to the uh, factored form with the binomial. So you can see in their example over here that they had x squared plus 6 plus 9, and they just broke it down into this form right here. They said x squared plus 2 times something times something plus 3 squared. So a plus 2 times ab, oops, a squared, plus 2 times ab plus b squared. So they put it in this form, and then that allowed them to just take a plus b squared. So that's what we're going to do with this one too. We're just going to work our way backwards through the process. So let's do some examples. Factor each polynomial. Okay, so uh, could you factor this in the way that we did on um, Friday? Friday or Thursday? The way that we did last week. Could you do it that way and could you do this and say oh, it needs to add to 8 and multiply to 16 and find the two numbers. Yes. Yes, you most certainly could. And you would see that, ah, uh, that you, you would see that this needs to be 4 and 4, and we would get n plus 4 times n plus 4. You could totally do that, and you get uh, the same thing. You want to do it that way? Totally do it that way. But if you can start to recognize this pattern, uh, the pattern, just seeing the pattern will be faster than doing our whole what number does the da and the da da da. Like, seeing the pattern will be faster. So I recommend learning the pattern. So I need to get this in the form of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now this might look hard, but it's not so bad because my, let's, let me get a different color here. My a squared and my b squared are right here. So it's easy to figure out what a needs to be and what b needs to be. Let me show you. So what are, well, n, n squared, that just stays the same. That stays the same. And then what squared gives me 16? Something squared equals. Ah, 4 squared. 4 squared gives me 16. Perfect. Now look at this. I have a and I have b. So when I say plus 2 times a times b, I'm just taking this is coming from here and the 4 is coming from here. Fantastic. Awesome. So, now, and you can see, you can see that this is exactly the same. These two things are exactly the same. But now it's much easier to put in the form of a plus b squared. Because I know what a is and I know what b is. So I have n, which is a, plus what is b? Ah, oh, it's 4. And that is your final answer. So do you actually, do you actually even need to worry about this middle term right here? You need to make sure it follows the pattern. But if you see that it follows the pattern, you really, really care about A and B. All right, if that was confusing, let's do another example. Another example. All right, so remember, I want this in the form a squared. Oh, not plus. Now we are minus 2ab plus b squared. So um, remember, I need to figure out 4x squared. What squared gives me 4? 2 squared gives me 4. And what squared gives me x squared? Well, x. So here we have 2x squared 
And remember that that's our a. So minus 2 times a, and our a is 2x, um, times b, but we don't know what that is yet, because we're just going to start looking at b now. We have 9 here. So what times, or what squared gives me 9? 3. 3 squared. So this is 3 squared. And now that's our b. So remember, the b that goes here also goes here. So I should have 3. Awesome. And you can see that these two things are exactly the same. If I multiply this out, I'll get minus 12x and all that jazz. But now I just want to put it in the form of a minus b squared. Minus, that minus comes from this minus here, just like that plus came from this plus right here. Okay, so I have, I have a and I have b, so I have 2x minus 3 squared. And that's it. There you go. There you have it. So you're just working your way, like, back way through the pattern, or backwards through the pattern. So let's see, if I had to put steps on it, this, uh, this would be step one, is put it in a squared, oh uh, yeah, put in form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, or minus, you know, plus or minus. And then uh, step two would be this one right here. Step two would be find a and b. And then this would be the last step. Step three would be put in form a plus or minus b squared. It depends. Depends on whatever, whatever this sign is determines what this sign is. Okay, awesome. Let's check and make sure that we were right. Aha, uh -huh. n plus 4 squared and 2x minus 3 squared. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. Those are all the examples I have for you today. Uh, remember that if you are, if you have questions, if you're confused, if you don't understand um, something that happened in this video, please, please, please tune into my live stream every weekday from 12 to 2 p.m. I am more than happy to answer your questions. And your homework for today. Remember that this is not required, but it'll help you get ahead in class. So uh, your homework is to factor all of these polynomials. The first ones are this pattern of a squared minus b squared gives you a plus b, a minus b. And these are all the a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared, which you want to put back in the pattern of a plus or minus b squared. Awesome. So remember, you're going from, and let's see, we'll use a different color. You're going from this form to the other form, and from this form to the other form. All righty. That those are your homework questions. I know that there's quite a few of them, but remember, the more you practice, the more comfortable you get with these things. And now, your launch for today comes from William James, and it says, It is our attitude at the beginning of a difficult task, which, more than anything else, will affect its successful outcome. And this is a fancy way of saying your attitude at the beginning of doing a really hard thing is what's going to help you do that hard thing. So if you have a good attitude going into something hard, like say, 
uh, say, getting an A on a math test. That's, that's pretty hard. You gotta work hard to do that. And when I say it's hard to do, I don't mean that it's impossible or that it's not worth it. I just mean that it takes a lot of hard work in order to get there. So if you set out to get an A on your next math test, uh, but your attitude is, you know, I really want an A, then that doesn't set you up for success very well. If you say, I really want this A, and I'm going to work hard for it, that sets you up for success more than just, I, I want it. I hope it happens. I really want an A. I hope I get an A. Hope is a good thing to have. Hope must be coupled with hard work. You gotta you have hope and hard work. You can't just wish on a star for an A on a math test. You also have to work for it. So, it's your attitude. It's your attitude before you start working to get that A on that math test. Your attitude of, this is going to be hard, but I can do it. It's going to be hard. I need to work hard, but I can do it. That's going to help you get the A on that math test. So that is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.